almost. Well, two running backs on the same team may be teammates, but two teammates on the same fantasy team, well, that's dangerous. That's a handcuff right there. Those two on the same team, 18,999 of you just inside 19,000 got that, but the buddy system, some of you thought you were in the pool, 5,968 of you, look, go directly to fantasy football jail. Do not pass go, do not collect a victory. You have been handcuffed. If you did not get that one right. Q3. Besides the Jets, what other team is still winless at home? Jaguars, Washington football team, or none, neither of those. Jacksonville, Washington, or Big Zip. Well, four teams are still winless on the road. The Jets, Jaguars, Cowboys, Washington, ain't getting it done. And don't get me wrong, Jacksonville and Washington are not playoff teams. They're not that good. But at home, they've taken care of business. So none is the answer that you were looking for right there. 13,080 of you caught our drift and got that one right. It is just the New York Jets who haven't won at home. That would have been too easy of a question, right? Because the Jets, well, they haven't won a football game this year. Before jumping into Q4, it's time now for the Hall of Fantasy's Fresh Fit of the Week. And Adam Thielen pulled out these Alex Trebek cleats. That is pretty awesome with the music and everything. Dun, 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 dun. And he got a win. So Adam Thielen paying some respects to Alex Trebek. Awesome stuff on a winning night for the Minnesota Vikings. Q4. Which of these players is the NFL's all-time leader in non-offensive touchdowns? Deion Sanders, Devin Hester, or Ed Reed? Non-offensive touchdowns, all right? So for those of, you at, those of you at home know there are three phases of football, offense, defense, special teams, all right? Ed Reed scored a ton from his safety spot on defense, but Hester and Sanders, they had the advantage of being return men too. And the goat punt and kick return returner is Devin Hester. All my friends out there in Chicago knew that one. 9,698 of you. Hester's 20 non-offensive TDs are the most all time. And they also tried to put him at offense, play him at wide receiver. And he wasn't that really that good at it. So that, that doesn't add to this question. Q5 we can go to. What team won, but failed to cover the spread when a player stepped out at the one yard line instead of scoring this past week? The Browns, the Cardinals, or the Steelers? Browns, Cardinals, or Steelers? East, West. Well, you already saw what happened with the Cardinals. Nick Chubb, he's a team player, but not for the 89% of betters who picked Cleveland to cover the three and a half point spread over the Houston Texans. Chubb stepped out at the one on a 59 yard run to have the Browns kneel and win the game 10-7. So congrats to Browns fans for what Nick Chubb did here. He takes that snap, breaks a tackle, breaks another. Is he out in the backfield? No, he's down the sideline. Nick Chubb, 30, 20, 10, 5, 1. That's where he went out of bounds. That's a bad beat for betters, and it's really bad for fantasy managers who had Nick Chubb on their team. It's a bad loss for the Texans, but Texans fans, you can celebrate with this. You didn't lose because Nick Chubb stepped out. No, that's not why. You just didn't score enough points. We're halfway through this game, players. So let's take a quick break. Do what you got to do. Get hydrated. Get rested. Talk to your friends. Send a text. Send an email. Send a page if you're still living in the 90s. And let's look at the halftime. Tweet and greet. I asked you on Twitter, who would have who would have had the better baseball career and why? Russell Wilson or Kyler Murray? We got some great answers on this one. A lot of baseball, football fans, sports fans in there. But my favorite came from Once Tommy who said, Kyler, he's very athletic, and his speed would be perfect for the diamond. Could be another Ricky for the A's. I assume you're talking about Ricky Henderson, Tommy. I mean, look, that's the greatest leadoff hitter of all time. If you think that's what Kyler Murray, a former first round pick by the Oakland Athletics would have been, that's saying something. Russ had a, a fine minor league baseball career, but you're right. It looked like Kyler was a first round pick going somewhere. He's also going somewhere in the NFL. I think he's all right. Q8, which of these players surpassed Dan Marino in career passing yards last week? Philip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, or Aaron Rodgers? No, Ace Ventura is not the answer. Ray Finkel, not the answer. Einhorn, no, but in the QB class of 2004, Ben Roethlisberger and Eli Manning are the ones with the rings. They've won Super Bowls. But in passing stats, TDs, and yards, 
No one tops Philip Rivers. He's sixth all time in TDs and this week passed Dan Marino to break into the top five all time in passing yards. 9,261 of you seeing what Phil was doing. Nice job. I can't promise the rings. Father time is creeping up fast on Phil Rivers. That is what happens when you have nine kids that are trying to play in the NFL all the way to age 40. Kudos to Phil Rivers for that, but will you get a, touch, will you get a little bit of a ring in Indianapolis? We'll see. Q7. What team is facing discipline after posting a locker, locker room celebration video? The players were unmasked. The Saints, the Bears, or the Eagles? Saints, Bears, Eagles. NFC teams. One that wins a lot, two that haven't been winning a lot. In week two, Sean Payton was fined for not wearing a mask. Two weeks ago, the Saints' official social media accounts posted locker room celebrations where players broke COVID protocol, and they're expected to be punished as repeat offenders. You be the judge. I mean, it looks like a blast, but it also looks pretty blatant like during a pandemic that's probably not something that should be going on. You're trying to play games and avoid those tests spreading around. 8,765 of you probably retweeted that video, saw it on Instagram somewhere, knew exactly what I was talking about, and you are headed on to the next question. Also, the Bears and Eagles haven't been winning that much. So, Q8. This week, what player signed an extension that pays him a record annual salary for his position? Dalvin Cook, David Bakhtiari, or Tyran Matthew, Honey Badger, right there at the end. All these guys are good. And Aaron Rodgers, he's good. He's so valuable that his blind side is setting records. Green Bay's left tackle David Bakhtiari signed a deal that will pay him a record $23 million a year over the next four years. He claims to be Aaron Rodgers' best friend. 8,542 of you are good friends with me getting that one right. Also, this guy was in Pitch Perfect 2 in case you missed it. Check this out. David, can you handle this? Clay, can you handle this? And yes, if you saw out of the corner of your eye, Bachelor, Bachelorette fans, Jordan Rogers, Aaron Rodgers' brother, was in that scene in Pitch Perfect 2 as well. The acapella scene, look it up. Always surprises me, right? They had a little bit of beef while they were in that movie scene with the Packers. Q9, what did the Patriots trade to the Jets for compensation for Bill Belichick? Was it another coach, draft picks, or cash? All three kind of weird options for a trade. Well, you rarely, rarely see coaches traded for players, but this was unique. Bill Belichick was hired as head coach of the Jets, and then he resigned basically right away, had a press conference, resigned to go coach the Patriots. Well, to avoid a lawsuit, the Pats and Jets exchanged some draft picks as well. 7,471 of you continue marching on. Look, I mean, this happened with Bill Parcells three years ago. I think you look back, what is it, 21 years later, 20, 21 years later, the Patriots could sacrifice those picks for what they were able to do in the last two decades. But no more Tom Brady. Might be over, Pats fans. All right, well, it's now time for the final question of the game. This is it. It all comes down to this last round. Don't Nick Chubb this final run. Get in the end, into the end zone. Get over the line. Going out at the one, don't do anything. Take a guess. See what happens. There's no back to go here. All right. Tom Brady is the highest scoring fantasy player ever. And he became that last week after surpassing which of these players? Peyton Manning, Emmitt Smith, or Jerry Rice? Peyton Manning, Emmitt Smith, or Jerry Rice? All three of these options set fantasy records at different times. And as of last week, Jerry Rice, he was the all-time leader in PPR fantasy. But Rice's PPR record, which was 5,141.8 points, was passed by Tom Brady, who now has 5,164.4 points. And let's check out who was able to get that one right. 5,489 of you know what Jerry Rice did, the Hall of Fame wide receiver. You all are Winners this week, you made it to the end zone like Jerry Rice did so many times in his career. And for those of you that are like, what? Wait, I, but PPR, well look, if it's PPR and Jerry Rice was at that point of PPR, well guess what? Tom Brady passed him in every other form of fantasy as well. I'll tell you what, 
You all brought the heat this week because we got a lot of winners. 5,489 of you. MSAC, 